Hey girly, I just got back from the grocery store. One day I was like, dang, I really gotta hit up the grocery store. So I went from the bus stop straight to the grocery store, the one that's open near me, which is not my favorite one to go to just cause it's usually a little pricier, but I went in there, there was no one there. <laughs> there was no one there. They were just stocking the shelves. So it was all employees. And I was like, wait a second, this is a little game changer. I don't love going to the grocery store when there's a bunch of people there. I was like, okay, my next time when I just need like a little trip like today, I, it was a quick trip. It's like a fill-in trip because I went to Sam's last week. But yeah, I went and dude, it's just my favorite thing ever to go first thing in the morning. Now, it's like literally barely 7.30, 7.30 and I'm already home from grocery shopping. These are those grocery bags again. I'm gonna mention them because I just wanna mention the owner. She's so sweet. Literally anytime I like happen to show them or tag them, she is always super grateful. She's so sweet. I've had them now, I don't know how long, I want to say I got them in the fall. I use them every single time I go grocery shopping. I go grocery shopping no less than two times a week. Maybe not huge trips, but I always use them. They're a crazy good quality. These are like leather handles. It's all like handmade um, in Mexico. They all have like different um, little things hanging off of them. They're all different. These two are actually the same little, you know, I try to make mine look kind of similar. Yeah, but they have a ton. They have like brown, they have like very different vibes. So it's sincerely Ali, A L I dot com if you want to purchase one from her. This is the small size. And in here right now I have like milk and I like to put the heavier things in here, the medium size. And these are the shorter ones. She also has taller ones. She has some with um, things on the top as well where it like actually kind of shuts. She has purses and stuff too. Let me show you that one. Large size. This one, I try to put the light stuff in here but I never do, girl. I got all kinds of milk and rice and bananas and none of that is light. But this is the large one. So just by comparison, the large to the small. In case you, in case you're curious, because I get questions about them all the time, thought I would mention her again because people usually ask. If you notice I'm unbagging quite a bit of Gatorade, <laughs> that is because one, it was on sale, thank God, um, because their their prices suck. So uh, I was like, buy three, get three free, and I was like, yeah, cause upstairs, right above us, I've got a sick kid. So I got some crackers, <laughs> some Tylenol. We have Dayquil, we have Nyquil, we have different cough medicines and throat drops and everything else, but I know she's going to, it sounds like she has whatever I had, and all I wanted was crackers and Gatorade. I bought crackers and Gatorade, and then I'm gonna make a sourdough. I bought her some of her favorite soup, which is the broccoli cheddar soup from Panera. They swear it doesn't taste the same when it's from the store, but like, she's probably only gonna have a couple bites if she wants any. I didn't eat for like, um, really a couple days when I got sick. Uh, hopefully it's not the same thing, hopefully she has something else, but if it is, it's a biatch. So, can I get everything in with one trip? Of course I can. I mean, Jewel got Nala some Fairlife. Got Jaden some regular milk. We got a Stoke because I have been doing an iced coffee probably every other day or so, and you know I need my Stoke. We need some bananas. I do those with my protein shakes, and sometimes I just eat a banana. Not very often, but sometimes. Crackers for my child. This cheese is so good. <laughs> ten dollars for this bag which is actually insane but boar's head cheese is so good i did decide that instead of grabbing the cheese and meat packs there and now i'll take them for lunch i was like i'm just gonna hop out later and we're gonna run to aldi real quick and we're gonna buy the meat and cheese packs there they're only like 250 or something I and mean, they are like five six seven dollars sometimes and i'm like i was like girl do the math fifty dollars for you to take meat and cheese for the, like, during the week, that's crazy to me. The kids take these a lot too for their lunches, these little pasta ready things. You just pop it in the microwave and it's like, it's pasta that's already made. It's sausage. But I did get three packs of the goodles. So when I posted these on Instagram, I posted that I had gotten this one, I think. And me and Ala ate it and it was pretty good. It's shella good. Uh, it, it's a high protein, high fiber, like mac and cheese basically so then we went and I got this one which I think is just the original one and a lot of you said this one tastes just like Kraft mac and cheese like the blue box Kraft mac and cheese so we'll see I don't even know if my kids really like the blue box mac and cheese but whatever these will be like a nice little easy side when I'm making dinner and then I got this one because someone messaged me and was like everyone must try this cacio e pepe inspired mac 14 grams of protein seven grams of fiber with prebiotics nutrients from plants unbelievably delicious I guess we're a we're a goodles house now and since Mel is sick I'm scrapping the dinner I was gonna make tonight and instead 
I'm gonna make Jay uh, one of his steaks that I had in the freezer along with a baked potato. Poison, because my daughter requested a very specific HelloFresh meal, which obviously I don't have the ingredients from HelloFresh, but I still have the recipe card. Honestly, that was like half of the, the appeal of HelloFresh was all of those recipe cards, because they're so easy to follow, you keep them. It's great. They did have a sale on dragon fruit. This is Nala's favorite fruit, which I don't know why, because to me it almost tastes like nothing, and that's what she says. She's like, yeah, it tastes like water, and I'm like, but it's normally like seven bucks for one dragon fruit, but today they had it on sale $1.99 a pound, and I assume that's not more than a pound. That being said, it could have been. Now I'm curious. Shella Good Goodles. Those are only $3.99 a box. I mean, that's not the best, but that's not horrible. Hey, yeah, it was only $1.97. Normally, it would have been $6.92. Got a few Olipops. They do sell slightly bigger assortments of Olipops. Like, you can get six, I believe, or eight. You can get eight at Costco now. Just FYI, for an Olipop girly, you can get a mix of the strawberry vanilla and the root beer ones at Costco, an eight pack. It's a way better price there. We're pretty much out, so I grabbed a few, but I don't wanna get too crazy because I think there might be a small Costco trip, small Costco trip in my future because Jaden ran out of his yogurt and that yogurt is way cheaper when you buy it at Costco. Garlic and some eggs. Like I said, this is like an in-between kind of grocery haul. This milk, I think I told you guys about it already, but it's worth mentioning again. It's so good, the barista lovers one. But it is, obviously, it's like gonna be, you know, it's gonna be a little, a little fattier, it's gonna have a little, little sugar, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna be a little more decadent than your traditional unsweetened oat milk. <laughs> Definitely more decadent. I like to cut that with this, and then a little bit of this cream. Oh, this is my new favorite creamer, it's so good. The reason I always liked getting my other creamer, which was the sugar-free one from Coffee Mate, is because it was sugar-free, which meant it was less calories. I could just have as much as I wanted to have, which was normally four tablespoons. And because it's an artificial sugar, it was always sweeter than the other creamers. But this creamer is really good, and it is 30 calories a tablespoon, which is more traditional. It's more typical for a creamer like this. Um, but it's not a sugar-free creamer. It, I mean, it's not like the cleanest creamer, but the first ingredient is oat milk, which is just water and oats, and I like that. And then the second ingredient is liquid sugar. I, I'm, I'm by no means over here trying to like be a clean eater per se, because I don't even, <laughs> there's too much like, I feel like competing, conflicting information out there, trying to navigate it and it'll be like, I'm a dietitian, and this is the worst thing ever. I'm a dietitian, and this is actually perfectly fine. But what they are drinking is, that's the worst thing ever. And it's like, dang it, I, dang it. Which, who do I listen to? So I'm gonna just listen to me. I don't know, because I already know, I don't know what I'm doing, so but at least I trust myself. These are the yogurts though, these flips. Jaden likes these, he takes them in his lunch or whatever. They were on sale today for a buck which wasn't bad, that's why I bought a few of them. But he was like, Mom, I'm running out of my yogurts, could you please give me some more? And at Costco, they sell a case of them, 16 of them, for $12.99. So, that's great, because normally, Jewel has these for $1.50 each. I fed my mother yesterday, so she's over there in the jar, uh, but I also made sure to feed this jar so that I could have lots to use today to make a sourdough, because um, we haven't had a sourdough in about a week, and like I said, now is sick, so I want to make sure that, you know, I have some bread in case she just wants some bread and butter. So we're going to do this today. This is a, a labor of love. When you make sourdough, it does take hours. Not of you actively doing things for hours, but just sitting and resting and folding and resting and cutting and da-da-da, and you know, like that. This is my mother. It's not Patty in a jar. It's, it's my original starter that I did back um, in whatever last summer i think last may i mean this isn't the original original you know i dump pretty much all of it out whatever sticks to the jar i just add more flour and water and then every time it just reactivates itself and bloop, it's like a perfect method now i don't measure i just i just go with my gut now okay let me put all this away i'm so excited the garden season is coming i'm just thinking about all the things i am and i'm not gonna plant this year me and Solomon were talking about it and he was like yeah you learn something every single year and I'm like you're not lying because I learned hell no to Brussels sprouts because all it does is attract worms and worms and worms which are it's so disgusting all right let's get this sourdough started it's 8 14 I use the recipe from the King Arthur baking book I know I've told you guys a million times 
but it's still the one I use because it works, it's great. This is what gave me the instructions on how to start my starter. It's really not that hard, it's just those first two weeks require, um, they require you to be involved. And when it's all good and bubbly like this, is it gonna pour out? Okay, tell me before it pours out. But when it's all, oops, see, thank you for telling me. When it's all bubbly and everything, that's, that's your nice ripe culture that you need. <laughs> so this recipe calls for 454 grams. I try to do extra this time. So what I tend to do is I tend to actually, you need water for the recipe and I tend to put the water in here and shake it up and I feel like that really gets a lot of it out. I will say, I'm letting my water heat up, but I will say that I put my starter in the fridge for like two months and I did nothing to it. I just pulled it out, I mixed the hooch in and then I fed it, I let it sit out. It was kind of struggled the first day. I did it again the next day. It, I was like, okay, you're coming to life. By the third day, she was ripe and ready to go and I made a sourdough. It's not as fussy as it would seem sometimes online to maintain a sourdough starter once you get it going. There aren't very many ingredients. It's just your starter, uh, five cups of flour or 595 grams. I just measure it. It's easier that way. I do go through flour very fast. This is King Arthur Unbleached Flour. Again, I went to the store. I went to uh, Sam's or Costco. Actually, I went to both. And I could not find um, the unbleached King Arthur flour or any unbleached flour. At Sam's, they only had bleached flour. I don't really know the difference, but um, I feel like this one's better. And then you need rye flour for this recipe. So we do 85 grams of rye flour. This, uh, this is... Um, the only bag I've ever bought of this and it's lasted me forever. Um, then you just need water and salt, but the salt doesn't come until after it rests for a little bit. So I'm just gonna mix this up. After you mix it this first time, you just let it sit for 20 minutes and then you add in the salt and you start the actual kneading. I guess it has to do with something, I don't know if it's about the gluten or something, I don't know. The book explains it, I just don't remember because I was like, whatever, say less. If you say wait 20 minutes, I'm gonna wait 20 minutes. You do not need to explain yourself. But this book does explain itself. Probably makes you a better cook, honestly, <laughs> when you actually know why you're doing what you do. Uh, whoops, you weren't on, but <laughs> I added 17 grams of salt. I'm gonna mix it in a tiny bit with my spoon and then I throw it out on this nice little mat from Ikea and we start the wet dough method. It just involves like chopping the dough, stacking it up, and then chopping the dough, stacking it up, and then chopping the dough, and then you start throwing the dough. You fold it and you throw it. Usually make my arm hurt. That's how I know I'm done. When my arm starts to hurt, my shoulder, that's how I know I'm done. My hand hurts which means it's time to start flipping it together. Ah! Separately, I'm gonna film a different video where I'm showing you guys me going through the whole house and taking care of like this very long list of tasks that I have, cleaning the espresso machine. Although honestly, that could be on there, but it's other stuff like things that have needed to get done. And today marks three years since I bought this house. Um, and they're just, you know, a three-year-old house needs a little bit of TLC when it's a builder grade house, especially because everything is kind of like I don't, know. I don't want to say it's all cheaply done, but you know, it, to some extent, they do, you know, cut some corners. Yeah, so we're out of warranties and all of that stuff. So anything wrong with the house, I have to fix myself. There are some actual issues that I cannot fix. Um, again, I'll touch on this in the other video. It is what it is. I can't fix it. I have to pay someone else to fix it. And it's not a big enough issue at this point for me to do that. So anyway, we're gonna make some coffee. Not sure what kind yet. I lost a nail, not while I was making my bread, but as I was cleaning, so. Flat out, I gotta put that back on. I'm gonna use this one. 
My mom went to Mexico and she brought me this mug. Look, it's like a hand, a hand and mug. It's one of these mugs. We like to multitask. Multipass. Lilu Dallas Multipass. So I haven't tried this one yet. This is the vanilla. The other one that I've been having is the sweet and creamy, which is like the same thing pretty much. I get the Italian sweet cream of the other creamy, but anytime, or the other creamer rather, anytime I get creamer, I pretty much tend to go towards the sweet and creamy or the cream or whatever, sweet cream, whatever variation of something called sweet cream. I got these at Costco in a big pack. Gosh, I hope they haven't expired. Yeah, not even close. Okay, um, we only have a couple left, but they come in a big pack and they're these Korean coffees. It's a mild latte. It comes with a straw and, or you can use it like a sippy cup. Yeah, they're actually really good. Coffee brand in Korea has been long loved since 1997. That doesn't feel like that long ago. Like 12 years ago, right? I want to learn latte art this year. This is nothing, but I just thought I would show you what's in the cup. <laughs> this is not supposed to be art, but coffee, Coffee is totally art all by itself. And flowers that are dying, like these ones, like they're just drying out and dying, these are also art all by themselves. And they don't smell all disgusting because most of the water is gone. You can see the water line now. Um, Lewis got me these. Can I tell you the day he got them for me? I, I'd been having some bad dreams and he woke me up one day saying bye. The first thing out of my mouth basically, like I moved away and the first thing out of my mouth was like, oh, I had a bad dream. He's like, what? Like what happened or whatever? And I was like, well, we broke up and I went on to tell him whatever. And uh, he was like, well, that's not real. You know, and I was like, I know it's not real. And he's like, well, you're acting like it is. <laughs> I was like, whatever. So he goes to work and then I like, whatever. I was like doing what I do here and I'm organizing and whatever. And so my back is to him when he walks in the door a few hours later or whatever. I heard him open the door, but then all I hear is um, only hope playing. And you don't just hear Only Hope playing. Nobody plays Only Hope. That is the song that Mandy Moore sings. It's her song. She sings it in A Walk to Remember during the play. Very significant song to the movie. Uh, my favorite movie of all time and one of my favorite books of all time. And uh, obviously I've seen it 10 billion times. He's never seen the movie before uh, because that's my movie. I don't need anybody else to watch that movie. I don't need to talk about it with anybody. I don't want to watch it with anybody. I don't want to watch you watch my movie. That's my movie. It's my personal movie. <laughs> so that's my movie. He's playing Only Hope when he comes in. And I was like, immediately, I didn't even see him. Like I said, I had my back turned to him. Immediately I like have tears in my eyes. And I was like, what the hell? Like, why am I? And I didn't even understand it. I was like, why am I? Like, why does that song make me immediately want to cry? And it's not even the sad part of the movie, okay? <laughs> but then I turn around and he has flowers. These were really, they were really beautiful flowers. He had chocolates and he just set them down. And you know, he's like, here you go. And uh, I was like, oh, oh, that was like the sweetest little thing. Like he'll buy me flowers and chocolates and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like not for a specific occasion, but that, him playing that song, I was like, why are you playing the song? And then I said, was that your first time ever hearing that song? And he was like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, that's so funny. But that was just, it was really significant. And I don't know that it had anything to do with the dream. I didn't like ask him, but I just wanted to preface it by saying, when I got up that day, I was being a little bit of a biatch and uh, I still got flowers. So I don't know what that means. It worked out. Anyway, long story, freaking long, sorry. Short story long. I love how they look as they're dying. Cause this happened a couple weeks ago. Um, they don't smell or anything either. Sometimes flowers reek, but I think that's when they have too much water. So I'm gonna sit and edit and live my life and send people answer emails, yada, yada, yada. I'm trying really hard to stay off social media. I gave myself a one hour time limit for the entire day. And you know what's so funny is that now I'm like, oh, I'm not gonna get on social media right now. Like this is so lame, do something else. Do it later, Sarah, get online later. Get Look at Instagram later. Like, oh, I wanna see what everybody thought of Usher's performance. Do it later, okay? <laughs> like, do it later because I've been consuming too much lately and um, it just makes me feel bad personally when I do it. Like I feel bad afterwards and I don't like that. So I, I just wanna do more things that don't, you know, make me feel bad. I'm, I'm gonna go on a walk. I'm gonna do different stuff. I'm gonna make dinner and make bread and I'm, I'm just gonna try to really focus on doing things that make me feel good. So not too good. <laughs> Some things I still am not gonna do, but I'm gonna do things that make me make me feel good and make me feel like I'm doing something productive. What, what have you guys been doing? How, how did your, uh, if any of you did goals, how, how, how are those? Are they, are we, are we good? Or 
Are they soft now? Are they softer goals? I've been contemplating the idea of actually having some goals that I wanna do that I can actually work towards on a regular basis. And I'm trying to kind of narrow them down, but some of them have to do with my body. Like, not that I wanna lose a certain amount of weight or that I wanna, you know, run so far or whatever, but more so like the capabilities of what I could do with my body. I'm not gonna be like, I wanna run a marathon. My mom did that. And that was actually very impressive. Um, for someone who never ran before, she did run the Chicago Marathon, completed it and everything a few years back. And that was really impressive. I was like, cool to see, to like witness her do that. That was really cool. Um, and my brother ran it with her. And so like, you know, it just shows like, you know, anything's possible. She was in her fifties and running marathon. Not necessarily that, but I would love, I'm just gonna spitball here. I'm not gonna set any of these as my actual goal, right? I would love to be able to do a handstand, like against a wall even, but I would love to be able to support my own body with my own body. Do you know what I mean? Like with my own arms. I would love to be able to learn how to do a handstand. I would love, like my whole entire life, I couldn't do a cartwheel. I couldn't do anything ever. Not even as a child, I could never do anything. And so it's just like, you know, there's certain things that I look at and I'm like, I can't do that. Like even stupid, <laughs> stupid things. Like we went to the um, uh, Tigres concert over the weekend and I was there listening to everybody doing their little Mexican call. You know what I mean? Ah! right okay I can't do it or rather I've never tried but part of me really wishes I could do that why can't I do that you know what I mean it's like oh Sarah because you never tried to do it and you never wanted to do it enough to learn how to do it and even things as trivial as that that's what I'm talking about so I would also love to learn how to do the splits not because I'm trying to like bust down over here but because I would like, again, I, w I just want like mobility, really good mobility in my hips and stuff. So I would love to practice to be able to do the splits. I would love to uh, continue to work on my Spanish. If you don't use it, you lose it. And girl, I didn't, I, I, I have not been using it. So I can understand it pretty well still, but I do struggle to get all the words out in the right order and everything else sometimes. So um, all the time, actually. Still really interested in the piano, but I'm excited that the kids are, really interested in trying another instrument. So I think both of the kids are gonna be adding their second instrument, which is a gateway to their third instrument. Their third instrument being the piano, for Nala at least. I don't know that Jaden has aspirations of the piano, but Nala certainly does. And so she wants to learn the different, those of you that are musically gifted, you're gonna know what I'm talking about. But the violin uses like certain strings or clefts or something. And then the cello uses the other ones, right? And she said if she learns the violin and she learns the cello, together she will have learned both and they are the same as what the piano uses. Whatever that means, someone I'm sure can put it into context. She could explain it to you, but she's upstairs laying in bed asleep. It's, a, it's just a gateway for her to get to the piano. And that's exciting. So physically, those are a couple of things that I would like to be able to do. And I feel like I just have to work at them and you know, probably within, um, I feel like a couple of months, I could, I could potentially do them. You know what I mean? Maybe a few months, maybe the whole year, I don't know. And there are some more things that I want to learn how to make food wise, uh, breads and stuff like that. Latte art, just little things that I feel like would make me just happy to have the knowledge. That's all. I'm just trying to grow. I'm trying to grow in a way that, I don't know, feels good. Hi, it's been many, many hours now. Um, to, you know what? Because I, for some reason it takes a super long time to import, import, is that how you say it? Yeah, to import the footage from this camera to my computer. I don't know why, but it does and it was, tricky business, but I edited a vlog while it was going on. Of course, you can edit while you import. You just can't finalize while you import. So I have these two bad boys right here, ret to go. I decided to make two instead of one big one, which is what I normally do. So this is like half size of what I normally do. So when you cook them, you cook them with a steam method. And these have risen for, they rose for two hours. They got reshaped. They rose another two hours, basically. These get cooked in Dutch ovens. I gotta get the parchment paper, but these Dutch ovens are at 450 degrees right now, which is pretty freaking hot. They're that's uh they're both cast iron actually, right? That's the that's the caraway pan. That's the always pan. The internet's favorite pans, not my favorite pans. I think when these ones finally kick the bucket, not so much the Dutch ovens. The Dutch ovens are fine. Uh, these are Dutch ovens, but the skillets, they all have issues, especially the caraway ones. Uh. Could just be a me thing. Sometimes I think I'm the problem, and that's a that's a possibility. But uh, if you have your heart set on like caraway pans or always pans, first of all, I would say always over caraway. But second of all, 
you might not be missing what you think you're missing. And just remember that. I would have never done this. So clearly someone else used parchment paper. I'm gonna assume one of my kids. And they left me that. What the heck am I supposed to cook this on? If I'm not cooking it on paper, bruh. <laughs> what if we do the one where you go like straight down the, ooh, okay, crusty, crustacean. Maybe I need to change my blade. It's probably been a while. Okay, so we went straight down the middle and then you're like not sharp enough, babe. And then what, we go like do these little ones? Remember that. Okay, latte art and bread art. They're all on the docket for this year. What's a docket? I'm not exactly sure, but I think I used it right. Uh, we'll just keep this one simple. We'll just go straight down. Yes, wonderful, beautiful, we love it. Ah, wow. Look at these gorgeous babies. Um, the bottoms look a little crispier than they normally do, but otherwise they look fine. They're super duper hot right now, so I'm not gonna cut them. I'm gonna, um, actually I'm trying really hard to get something done so that I can run out, because I need to go grab Jay. Typically I leave, I don't know, about literally 50 minutes from now, but I'm hoping I can finish this real fast run to PetSmart and get the cats some food. Lewis always takes care of it, but I thought it'd be nice for me to go because I feel like he always remembers like after a long day and then he's gotta go do it. So I'm like, mm, what if I just go do it this time? And then uh, run by Aldi and get parchment paper because that's why my bread is brown. Meat and cheese packs that she really likes because fingers crossed, she should be good to go to school tomorrow. She did wake up at one point today and I chatted with her for a little bit. She should hopefully be fine. By tomorrow. I am doing the parts of work that I am not good at doing necessarily. The uh, business -y stuff. It's not like I'm an idiot or anything. I, I, I know how to do things, but things are just beyond my comprehension. I don't, I don't understand why you do this or why you do that or why you do this and why you do that. And, and I have a lot of people kind of on my team, we could say, people that I pay to help me do things. But even then, I'm so confused, <laughs> so I'm trying not to be. This is an important time of year. I've really been setting myself up to make this easier over the last few years, but man, I just, there's a lot of moving parts and thankfully the, I have the people that I have, but um, I'm still a little confused. Guess who got all her little errands done and I'm 15 minutes, 20 minutes. You know what, I'm too early at this point. <laughs> I'm 20 minutes early for picking Jay up. Made the executive decision to go to Pet Supplies Plus instead of PetSmart. Where do you guys get your guys' pet food at? Or I used to order it from Chewy, and then I started going to Walmart, or ordering it from Walmart. And then Lewis kind of just took it over, and he was like, don't get it, you know, I'll get it. I'll get whatever they need. He's like very uh, in tune with cats. And uh, so then I just stopped getting it, I guess. Yeah, now we either go to Pet Supplies Plus or we go to uh, PetSmart. But I made the executive decision to go to Pet Supplies Plus. That's quite a mouthful. Because it was closer and then I hit up Aldi. I went in there and I filled this bag and then I like took each item out and then threw it back in the bag. And I was like, I wonder if it looks like I'm stealing. But I wasn't, but I wonder if it looked that way. But I bought these things. There's a couple more in there. But these are the things that Nala likes to take for lunch. And they're only three bucks. $2.99, I think, at Aldi. I just sanitized my little hands. I'm actually drinking coffee, so this is gonna be gross together, but obviously, as soon as I start eating, I stop drinking. That's, you know, that's my thing. So, um, yeah, this is my first time using the cup. Oh, psych, I made a smoothie this morning. This is my second time using the cup, and it's perfect. It's like the perfect size. I really like it. I'm glad it has a lid. Anyway, still listening to Well Met by Jen DeLuca. I think I'm nearing most likely, if this book has a third act conflict, I'm nearing the third act conflict. And then, uh, and then we'll see. We'll see where we go from there. But so far, so good. From a distance, they looked like a plain brown, almost dull. But up close, they were a riot of color. He was my very own pointless painting.